Hello, my name is John Paul Jones, and I am the Don Bennett Moon Dean of the University of Arizona's College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. I'm pleased to welcome you to the college's winter 2020 convocation ceremony. As we begin, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that the University of Arizona sits on the ancestral lands of the Tohono O'odham people and the Pascoyaki people, two of the 22 sovereign nations in the state of Arizona. I stand here with respect for the distinctive traditions, languages, and cultures of the indigenous peoples of this great state. And now, to all the supporters out there, the college is tremendously proud to present this graduating class. To our graduates, I invite you to reflect on your supporters' contributions to your success. Friends, family members, university faculty and staff, these are the people who joined you on this journey and who have made this moment possible. This ceremony celebrates their efforts as well. If you're fortunate enough to be in touch with one or more of your supporters now, please take a moment to thank them. So what does it mean to be a graduate of the University of Arizona? It means that you've earned your degree from one of this nation's top 25 public research institutions. That ranking is based on the over $700 million of research income brought to this state by UA faculty each year. This research prominence has earned us membership in the Association of American Universities, or the AAU, a select group of public and private institutions that includes universities like Berkeley, Columbia, Harvard, MIT, Princeton, and Yale. I might mention that U of A is the only university in Arizona that is a member of the AAU. <clears throat> we claim such a high rank and stellar national rep reputation, thanks in part to the research excellence of the nearly 500 faculty in the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. They, like you, rose to meet the considerable challenges we faced in this extraordinary year, and I am inexpressibly grateful for their tireless commitment to your success over the past nine months. Thank you to our amazing faculty. Graduates, if you think back maybe to your very first class at the U of A, it's a safe bet that you felt some stress, but it's also a safe bet that not one of you predicted that your wildcat journey would turn out to be quite this stressful. From the pandemic to political divisiveness, to the struggles for racial and economic justice, we are living through one of the most momentous periods in this nation's history, and our beloved institution swims in this stream. And yet, we are here. Not only did you meet all the requisite demands of college life, the deadlines, the projects, the exams, this year many of you took care of family members, found additional work outside of the classroom, engaged in civil protest, and dealt with the constant stress of protecting yourself and those around you. 2020's unrelenting challenges and uncertainties have left us all emotionally strained, but I want you to know that we are confident in your preparation to meet this world head on. For in my view, and I may be slightly biased, SBS graduates are not only spirited, but they are also what this nation and world desperately need now. You are a class of graduates who will lead this institution with an understanding of the deep roots of and hopeful solutions to racial and ethnic injustice and inequality. You're prepared to contribute to an economy of opportunity, adaptability, and inclusive participation instead of alienation. From high government offices to school boards to local neighborhood organizations, it's my hope that you will work to build trust in our institutions by practicing the ideals of a pluralistic democracy. The worldliness and diversity you experienced at the U of A 
can help you confront xenophobia at home and turn an outward hand to the rest of the world in a spirit of cooperation and dialogue. I have no doubt that you will join forces to address the world's environmental crisis, reducing our waste, cleaning our air, water, and soil, and preserving our precious biodiversity. In short, you leave us ready and able to build healthy, safe, and caring communities, not only through the knowledge that you've acquired, but also through the skills you've gained. The ability to integrate conceptual reflection with empirical evidence. The discipline needed to apply explanatory reasoning based in the scientific method, as well as the sensibility entailed in cultivating empathetic understanding of others through your skills of interpretation. The insight to solve problems, large and small, through design thinking, experimentation, and innovation. And the ability to read closely, write precisely, and communicate clearly. Some of you have learned how to code. These skills should give you the confidence you'll need to lead. And as you lead, I encourage you to do so effectively and passionately but also thoughtfully and kindly. Talk across lines of difference. Be respectful and civil to one another. And value the different opinions, life trajectories, cultures, belief systems, and languages of others you will meet. After all, you are graduates of the University of Arizona's People College. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce today's convocation speaker, Matt Harrelson. An Arizona native, Matt attended high school here in Tucson and graduated from the University of Arizona with a business degree in 1983. Matt's experiences at the U of A are like those of many of our graduates here today. He made lifelong friends here, as you have done. He lived in a dorm, that's probably still standing. And he participated in Greek life, he also supported his studies by working on campus. After graduation, Matt moved to Los Angeles to take an assistant director position in UCLA's ticket office, eventually working his way up to director of the UCLA Athletic Fund. In 1995, Matt moved to the private sector, becoming the president of Capstone Headwear, a national custom cap manufacturer based in downtown Los Angeles. After a decade, he left Capstone to start his own apparel company, Double H Sales, working directly with a firm in Qingdao, China. A few years later, he opened a state-of-the-art laundromat, Oceana Laundry, in North San Diego County. And most recently, with his wife, Julie Briskin Harrelson, he embarked on his latest entrepreneurial venture, a collection of vacation rental properties located in Carlsbad, California, where they make their home. Now, even though Matt's first job was at UCLA and he lives in Southern California, he's an exemplar of the term wildcat for life. And it's not just him. His father, Hugh Harrelson, and his mother, Dorothy Harrelson, graduated from U of A, as did Matt's uncle Gilbert, Aunt Nancy, brother Scott, and his daughter, Sarah. That's three generations of wildcat graduates dating back to the class of 1937. And along with the family's fidelity to the University of Arizona, has been three generations of philanthropy aimed at ensuring student success in the college's School of Journalism. That's a record of giving that commences with Hugh Harrelson, Matt's father, who was a journalism major, and in whose grandfatherly footsteps daughter Sarah followed. There's no question that the support of the Harrison family is one of the reasons the University of Arizona has such a strong school of journalism, one that looks eagerly to a digital high-tech future, but does so with a firm grasp of the importance of traditional shoe leather investigation, in-depth research, and respect for the facts. It's with gratitude for the Harrelson support that SBS put forward, and this is a first in the history of the University of Arizona, an entire family for the colleges Alumni of the Year Award, which was conferred in 2017. 
And it's in light of this generational legacy and support, which also includes giving to the Arizona Center for Judaic Studies, the Hillel Foundation, and numerous nonprofits and charities supporting education, youth, and social services that we've asked Matt to say a few words to our graduates this afternoon. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Dean Jones. I can't tell you how honored I am to be able to address these newest graduates from the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Congratulations to you all, especially given the challenges you have faced in your final year of school. My middle daughter, Clara, graduated from college this past June, and although it wasn't a celebration that she had hoped for, it certainly did not lessen the magnitude of her accomplishment or the pride my wife and I have for her. No doubt this is the same way your family and friends are feeling about you today. As I begin, okay, wait, hold on. Bear with me for a few seconds, hold on. Okay, that's a bit better. Don't let this casual attire diminish how important I feel about this moment, not at all. It's a monumental day for you and your family, and it really is a privilege to address the next generation of difference makers. I just think dressing down in school colors is a fitting salute to the end of the year 2020. It just can't come soon enough for us all. I am a fairly unique wildcat. As Dean Jones mentioned, I am the midpoint of three generations of Harrelsons that are all University of Arizona graduates. My dad, Hugh, wrote for the Arizona Daily Wildcat during his time at school and graduated with a degree in journalism in 1952. Hanging behind me in my office is his blanket he received as a member of the Bobcats, a senior honorary organization that is still around 68 years later. My mom, who met my dad during her junior year at U of A while, while he was the Southern Arizona correspondent for the Arizona Republic newspaper, earned a degree in education in 1959. I finished in 83 with a general business degree my brother in 84 is a broadcast journalism major. And last but not least, my daughter who came to U of A as a women's soccer recruit and graduated in 2018 with another journalism degree. All of us look back at our time at the school as four of the best years of our lives, and I hope you will too. Today, you sit in front of your computer having earned a minimum of 120 units over at least four years. It took me four and a half. I'm feeling confident that you've figured out what is truly meaningful to you, and that will be invaluable as you begin to focus on this exciting next stage of your life. But let me allay your fears. I am not going to spend the few minutes I have with you talking about my career path and then advising you on how to, on, advising you on how to land your first job or manage your career. Instead, I'm going to focus on two things, something I believe can grow to be a meaningful and important part of your life, and secondly, something you must do to have a meaningful impact on the lives of others. First, about you. Earning a college degree requires a tre tremendous amount of effort and dedication. At times, it can be quite stressful, yet fulfilling, both academically and socially. Along the way, you meet some special people and develop friendships that are critical to your success and enjoyment. These friends will have come from a variety, variety of settings. The floor of your first dorm, your apartment complex, a fraternity or sorority, an intramural team, the Zona Zoo, or any of a number of classes, clubs, or organizations you were a part of through your major. The common thread is the shared sweat, tears, and pure joy. You have more invested with these relationships than you might have realized. I chose to wear this specific hat today as it is connected to the first message I want to share, the timeless and priceless value of the friendships you've made during your years in Tucson. But like most important things in life, they require effort to maintain. That was true for me. In 1983, six of my recently graduated fraternity brothers organized a spur of the moment trip to Las Vegas. During that trip, they shared old memories and created new ones. I was so enamored by the experience that I organized another larger reunion the following year. Note that at the time, there were no cell phones, laptops, or a thing called the internet where you could easily set up an e-bike. But with old fashioned outreach, we had about 15 guys make that trip and it was the beginning of a very worthwhile tradition. 38 years later, we've had annual reunions in five different states. Our last reunion held in Tucson 
just before the virus began impacted all of our lives. We had more than 60 attendees, including family members. For many of us, it was our first, back, first time back on campus in more than 30 years. What I just described is tradition my friends and I created, but in your case, it doesn't need to be on a grand scale or even an annual event. It just needs to be genuine and consistent. My recommendation is simple. Make the effort to remain in contact with the people that had an impact on your time and enjoyment at Arizona. As you get older and you have less free time, you'll find it much harder to develop the same close relationships you found in school. And despite any amount of time or distance, when you finally get the chance to reunite with those old college friends, you will be amazed at how instantaneous your reconnection will be. These are the people who have and will support you through the ups and downs of life, marriage, children, divorce, retirement, sickness, and all the other significant events in our lives. Other than your immediate family, you will find no better support system throughout your lifetime. My second point is related to the old, fra old phrase, find your passion. You usually hear it as it relates to finding the right job opportunity, but that advice is solid and I believe it, uh, it applies to all, all parts of your life. From what I've seen in my three 20 something year old daughters and their friends, your generation seems very motivated to make our world a better place. And you understand that time is of the essence. I turned 60 last month and I don't think I've experienced a more unsettling or difficult year than the one we are now finishing. Meeting the challenges of the final stages of the pandemic, finding employment, employment being able to afford shelter, food and healthcare. These are the questions that face you as you leave the University of Arizona, the same challenges that millions of other Americans currently face. Not in my lifetime has there been a greater need to get involved in supporting our own communities. I'd like to share a philosophy, an obligation really, that I learned from my wife's family. For generations, giving back was simply not a choice. This was their mantra. Life has different stages. When you're young and just out of college, you might not have a lot of money, so give your time. When you get a little older and you're working longer hours and maybe raising a family, you might have a little more money, but less time so give some money. The ultimate goal when you're old and gray like me is, a, is to find a way to give both. For my wife and I, the priorities are organizations that support education, health, children, and families. The organization that first piqued my interest was the Boys and Girls Club. From after school programs to mentoring kids to becoming, from, uh, to mentoring kids to become good citizens and lead healthy, productive lives, the club does so much for local communities. For my wife, Julie, one path has involved working with partners to establish a summer camp for at-risk youth in Watts. They have now expanded their impact in the community by building a music conservatory for both kids and adults. Since COVID hit in March, she along with others in our local school district have created a food bank that supports more than 900 people on a weekly basis. This community-based work relies on money, yes, but also on the volunteer labor of young people like you people who have the skills, talents, and the energy and ability to make a significant impact. Giving back is not a one size fits all. You just need to find the organization and purpose that speaks to you. You'll find it rewarding to work in concert with others who are equally dedicated to the cause. As my father-in-law always said, giving back makes you a better person. As I conclude, I want to thank the parents and all the professors and staff who supported and worked in concert with these students throughout their U of A journey. And to you graduates, congratulations once again. And I can't wait to read about you and your successes in future alumni productions. Go Cats. Thank you, Matt, for those inspiring remarks. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Amy Kimmy Hay, SBS Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Student Success, who will present the awards recognizing excellence among some of our graduates. Congratulations, fall 2020 graduates. I have the distinct honor of conferring our outstanding senior awards. These students were nominated by faculty members for their academic merit, their hard work, and their contributions to the broader community. The awards are then judged by a faculty panel. I wanna thank all of those nominating and judging these awards as it is through their contributions that we come to honor our award winners. 
The SBS Excellence in Leadership and Community Engagement Award goes to Miriam Sandoval from the School of Geography, Development, and Environment for demonstrating exemplary leadership skills through her involvement on and off campus and her impact on the lives of others. The SBS Tenacity Award, in recognition of overcoming substantial obstacles in achieving a degree, goes to Scott Hancock from the School of Geography, Development, and Environment. The SBS Undergraduate Research Award goes to Jillian Bryce Smith from the School of Anthropology in recognition of her academic achievement, originality, and creativity in an independent undergraduate research project. The SBS Student Success Award, recognizing academic accomplishments as a first-generation college student, goes to Lucy Atherin from the School of Geography, Development, and Environment. I also have the distinct pleasure to name our Fall 2020 Outstanding Senior Award. Each convocation, a select group of faculty choose one student as the outstanding senior in SBS. This year's recipient is Michael Laird. The SBS Outstanding Senior Award is bestowed upon best all-around student with his record of outstanding academic achievement, a history of active citizenship on campus or in the local community, and his demonstrated capacity for leadership. Congratulations to each of you, and it has been a pleasure having you in our college, and we wish you all the very best. And now back to Dean Jones. Thank you, Amy, and congratulations to our awardees. And now, I'm pleased to recognize the faculty reader for this afternoon's ceremony, Dr. Cristina Ramirez, Associate Professor of English and the Program Director for the Rhetoric, Composition, and the Teaching of English in the Department of English. Thank you, Christina. As Christina calls the graduates' names, you will see photos and quotes that students pick to share with you as part of this convocation experience. Thank you, JP, for your introduction. Welcome and greetings to our family, friends, fellow faculty and staff, Arizona national and international community. Muy bienvenidos familia, amigos, facultad, personal, nuestra comunidad en Arizona nacional e internacional. We embrace and appreciate your presence this afternoon to celebrate this important moment of our students and those that helped them arrive here, graduation. This time-honored tradition of honoring students at graduation by saying their name and recognizing them is a fundamental aspect of acknowledging each person's accomplishments. I'm honored to be the MC and saying each of your names today. While I say each of your names, I can also see your image and quote that you sent in. As an SBS faculty member, I'd like to wish all our graduates, a wonderful beginning to your postgraduate careers. I believe bright moments are on the horizon for each of you. Let us commence with the names. Anthropology. Allison Christ. Natalie Haluska. Zion Harvey. Nancy Medina. Arlene Rosales. Jillian Smith. James Turner. Militza Vasquez. Communication. Cristian Duarte Bustamante. Sergio Islas Jr. Hannah Khan. Kevin Kirschenbaum. Jared Masek. Crystal Mejia. 
Yakoved Morales, Allison Ortega, Jess Rains, Rachel Richter, Madison Savage, Sophia Isabella Sino, Amy Tazanowski, Rashanti Williams. English, Eva Halfax, Shannon Harris, Yasmin Herrick, Shojima, Raiden Johnson, Jonathan Crisell. Mariah Ontiveros, Lyra Rose, Emily Smolniski, Catherine Stahl, Gender and Women's Studies. Geography, Development, and Environment. Lucy Atherton. Jolinda Bella. Rhonda El Murib. Scott Hancock. Christopher Stout. Madison Weller. Global Studies, Melissa Cervantes, Chloe Holes, Amelia Lizarraga, Kelly McCaslin, Brenna McLean. Government and Public Policy. Merisa Acuna. Aya Anuti. Sergey Batswev. Grace Bubeka. Mackenzie Brandt. Christian Brook, Chelsea Carrasco, 
Desiree Casares. Michelle Chavez. Caitlin Clark. Anais Diaz Colvin. Kate Cripp. Christian Kufari. Vivian Kukrowski. Mackenzie Durfus. Lisette Burasso. Caitlin Ebers. Ashley Evaristo. Derek Forkob. Elisa Forbes. Juan Pablo Franco Clark. Cameron Goldman. Belen Gonzalez. Nisa Gonzalez. Ali Grajeda. Spencer Greenberg. Benjamin Grimm. Tiffany Guillen. Mackenzie Holden. Julia Jaworska. Lauren Johnson. Eric Kluskowski. Mireya Kuski. Adam Lopez. Garrett Madeya. Liani Martinez. Miranda Martinez. Evelyn Mata. Megan McDaniel. Gloria A. McKinney. Abraham Moises Ton. Marco A. Munoz Jr. Martin Munoz. Tristan Norman. Sarah Ortega. Rosie Wasin Gabri. Evelyn Perez Vance. Yatsira Ramirez Acosta. Jake Rajark. Cynthia Olivia Robles. Ana Romero. Gabriela Romero Garcia. Daniel Rubio. Haciel Salazar Milan. Michael Sowers Jr. Jessica Savel. Latanya Sherman. Lily Smith. Sage Stanford. Kelsey Thomas. Kayla Trafford. Alexander Wailinga.
History. Jacqueline Shamahorn. Noah Ooze. Information. Alex Carney. Sumaya Chinamili. Peyton Campagno. Shane Connors. Ray Ding. Shane Freeborn, Jorge Gomez del Campo, Caleb Groff, Jiang Kim, Jiang Li, Zhang Hao Lin. Holly, Holly Mesa, Peter Ujam, Emma Peterson, Kimberly Rosma, Isabel Sandoval, Belen Valencia. Stephanie Wilson, Fred Zhu, Journalism. Vivian Contreras. Juliana Flores. Rosa Dalia Garcia. Ian Green. Francis Leon. Greg Minder, Rebecca Moreno, August Pearson, Manuel Micael Cutter Roderick, Jesse Tellez, Renee Torres. Michelle Trujillo, Nicolas Tucci, Trevor Williamson, Judaic Studies, Latin American Studies, Fernanda Cortina Zatarain, Linguistics, Saeed Abdulaziz Almasawi, Elizabeth Garcia, Danny Viascusa Mexican American Studies
philosophy. Jordan Daniels. Joshua Holcomb. Carlson Holloway Factory. Political Economy and Moral Science. Sociology. Ahmad Al Masuri. Darius Arnold. Lynn Unye. Carlos Camberos. Kayla Cooper. Elena Corona. Melissa Diaz. Allison Di Maria. Kylie Dublin. Tony Ann Gray. Tiana Henderson. Michael Laird. Ada Lamb. Idalise Maez. Matthew Melor. Jacqueline Mesa. Christina Newton. Veronica Nieves. Teresa Nix. Serena Olbrecht. Nichelle Parsons. Haley Henny. Madison Peters. Alexandra Schmidt. Tiffany Brooke Sinclair. Ashley Toma. Emily Wolf. Lydia Sodericki. A final congratulations to all of our graduates. I am confident that among the winter class of 2020 are some of the brightest, most resilient, and hardest working graduates in the history of this prestigious institution. With your family and friends, I celebrate your achievements, and I cannot wait to see what good you will accomplish. Good luck.